All right, let's unpack this a little more with William Lawrence, who joins us from Washington. He's a professor of political science at American University. How are you doing, Bill? Fine. Good to see you. Okay, so Russia, heaped with sanctions, needs countries to buy its oil and gas, but maybe not as much as they need that oil and gas. Is that, is that what is happening here? Yes and no. I mean, obviously, Russia has other clients that it can go to. Its gas is selling at a uh, highly discounted rate because of not only sanctions, but the approbation against governments from even acquiring Russian oil and gas. So that's going to continue to go down for Russia reputationally and otherwise and, and economically. Uh, but in terms of um, uh, Germany's needs, I mean, Germany and Europe have a lot of gas on hand, which is not talked about. Uh, and there's a lot more uh, American gas and other global sources coming in. Uh, Algeria says it's going to put some of its on the spot market. There's increases in production going around. Uh, so what this really comes down to, as alluded to in your report, is not really supply as much as it is price. And that company you were talking to, it, it wasn't as much that they can't get any gas at all. It's that they can't make a profit. And if all their profits go into the gas, then they have to shut it down. Um, so, you know, over the longer term, Germany will be able to adjust, Europe will be able to adjust. But in the shorter term, it's a real crisis for German industry, as you said. But again, it's as, as much to do with their bottom line as it has to do with whether or not they can get energy supplies. Right. And, you know, for years, countries like the United States watching Europe become dependent on Russian fuel uh, would say, you know, if there's ever going to be a problem, Russia, for example, with the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, the U.S. constantly warned Russia could have its thumb on that spigot. It could use the supply of energy as a weapon. Are we starting to see that happen? That's exactly what happened. And it happened right at the beginning of this conflict in Germany, too. Many people's surprise, and I think very much Putin's surprise, turned off uh, Nord Stream 2 right away. Now, there are four other pipelines that come into Germany you know, from Russia, and there's other uh, existing infrastructure, which is going to have to um, uh, shift. But the, the big story here over the long term is that all of Europe is going to have to move away from Russia. And that bodes really badly for Russia in the long term. I mean, think about this for a minute. 200,000 of Moscow's most talented people have left because they don't want to live in a Russia where they can't have jobs and make a living and have a, a, the lifestyle they wanted in Russia. So we're talking about a generational shift away from Russia being a successful part of Europe. And if that's the case, then Germany is just going to have to accelerate and shift to other energy sources. There will be some pain in the shorter term, but actually, ultimately, it's probably a good move for everybody as long as Putin's in power. And of course, sanctions take a long time to work, some longer than others. Right now, we, we still see Vladimir Putin asserting himself in multiple ways, not only, of course, with the war in Ukraine, but also asserting himself economically with these things like the supply of energy. How long before the, the sanctions pressure him enough to really be at the mercy of what the West is calling for? I think other things will happen first. The, the, the sort of two prongs of the military pressure and the sanctions pressure on Russia was who would be able to convince Putin from his inner circle to stand down and step back? Would it be the oligarchs, of which we now have 140 under U.S. sanctions and almost all of the Russian banks, or would it be the generals? And right now, we have a lot of generals refusing orders we have Russian soldiers shooting at Russian planes. Uh, we have uh, Russian soldiers deserting and on the run. And we have a lot of the army just going back into Belarus and Russia. And so I'm beginning to feel, and I wasn't mm. sure about this, let's say a week ago, that the military pressure is having a greater short-term effect than the economic pressure. But if this drags out months longer, um, just on the technology side, it's going to be really hard for Russia to do things like fix its airplanes or keep its factories running because it won't have technologies that are subject to the sanctions. And increasingly, China is sort of seeing right. where things are going and, and is signaling they may not step in and fill all these gaps for Russia if Russia stepping back helps China, too, because China was also an ally of Ukraine and doesn't really want a world with this kind of warfare in it. Right. And so far, China has refused to supply Russia with plane parts. It was interesting to see that. OK, fascinating insights, Bill. Always good to talk to you. <laughs>